craftsmanship and the workmanship in the building yeah is top notch well, like it's one of the best new build apartments i've yeah. seen like everything was exactly how it was supposed to be. Welcome back to REI Hot Seat. Andrew Hines here with Jacob Campanero. Jake. Thanks for having me on, Andrew. Thanks as always for being here. Today we're talking about a purpose-built sixplex that, I mean, it looks really good. I, yeah. got it, I got it up here on my screen and this is a different episode because normally we're talking like an off-market deal that we're gonna try and get an angle on. And although I think any deal we talk about, you kind of need to get an angle on yeah. because let's face it, it's Ontario. Well, that's and, yeah. and that's what this show is about. Like at least what I see this show is about, right? It's yeah. like finding those angles, those obscure angles that don't slap yeah. you in the face when you're on Realtor.ca looking for these. Yeah, buildings, right? like because we've talked about this before. Like, why is it still on Realtor.ca? Yeah. There's a reason usually. And I think the main reason is it's priced at such a way that only a few people can really make sense of it. And maybe it's that those few people have their creative angle with it. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause there's deals, like I was talking to Kellen, who was on my podcast a couple of weeks ago. He bought a uh, eight plex for 600 grand in the last year. Yeah, I mean, that was on MLS. Yeah. So it's not like good deals don't hit MLS. Um, but just, sometimes people, it, the buyers don't understand how to make them work. Well, yeah, you need to be a little bit more creative or, you know, so, sometimes it is just, you don't have the money to buy this particular building. I don't usually like that because I always think there's an angle you can take to, to buy these things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's... Well, there are foreigners coming in and just dumping money into Ontario. There like there are people who don't mind uh, less than four cap. <laughs> um, it's just something you got to keep in mind and you're going to want to, you're going to want to have an angle uh, to, to make it profitable for you. Right. Okay. So I'm going to just scroll through some of the uh, package here. We scrubbed it for, for the specific information, but this is Niagara region. Yep. They're asking um, just shy of 3 million. Yep. And uh, nice looking building on what looks like a, a, a corner that sees some traffic. Yep. And yep. Uh, you know, you've got, you got your amenities right nearby. These are all one bedroom units. You can see a little uh, floor plan here, really efficiently done. Cause the whole building's like just over 4,000 square feet. Yeah. yeah and, and I'll just, I'll stop you there. Cause I just, that's why I wanted to bring this listing in today. Not because I think it's this ultra cool off market or not because mm -hmm. it's this like, oh, steel of the steel of the year, but I've been through this building twice. Yeah. And I've seen this building when it was empty. I've seen it now full. And for some reason, I can't get it out of my head. I love this building. Like yeah. I, I went through and and I do have to say that the, the craftsmanship and the workmanship in the building yeah. is top notch. Well, like it's one of the best b new build apartments I've yeah. seen. Like everything was exactly how it was supposed to be. Um, like you know, even on new builds, like I went through basically the day they finished up and there wasn't even things mm -hmm. where I was like, oh, they need to fix that still. They need to fix this. Like it was just done really well. Yeah. Right? So I see that and I'm like, that's amazing. Like how do I get a client in that or how do I buy that? Um, right. And the limiting factor here has been that, you know, obviously with that quality of construction comes pricing, right? Yeah. And, and this is where, you know, the, the obvious, um, the obvious challenge with this one is, is the pricing, right? Like we, we've got to, you got to kind of figure a way to, make it work <laughs> at 3 million it'd be sure it'd be great if it came with 10 units for for 3 million uh even then it would still be yeah. it would still be a challenging one to make work for a lot of people yeah. but uh that being said look what it's got i mean you got the 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 nice brick exterior finish you got eight spots in that parking lot um you're right across from a shopper's drug mart and yeah. Like there's just a lot going on there. Not, and not to mention, they don't show it in the photos, Andrew, but the basement is a mirror of the building. So they actually have concrete foundation in the basement, storage, bike racks. Like yeah. you could honestly probably so throw extra another four units down there. Right. Yeah. So it's set up, it's got good amenities. And uh, here's just uh, pictures of some of the finishes. So they've got quartz going on in there, stainless steel, obviously well done. Uh, for a rental product, you got to imagine that that's probably able to rent for a good number. Uh, now, with that said, we did see some of the numbers and it, it looked yeah. like there's even potential for, for more rent. There. there is definitely potential for Lyft. Um, what are they? They're averaging about, what, 2000 a month right now per unit? Yeah, I'm going to pop over to that spreadsheet. So I, I had it written here. I just I did one through six. They said averaging 2000. So that works out to be about 12000 a month. So uh, let's run through the numbers real quick here. So 12000 a month is 144 a year. Uh, on the building. I've got a 1% vacancy in there. We had to come up with some assumptions here because the yep. taxes hadn't even been assessed. So we sort of figured maybe it's somewhere around 15,000. Yep. Um, we I would, had my own insurance yeah, quote. Yeah, insurance quote yep. that Jake got was 58, 93. Uh, maintenance, I put 4%, which 
uh, Jake and I were debating this off camera, how this is supposed to be shown, because technically you're supposed to separate your 750 to 850 a door per year, according to CMHC. And then you have like a 2% capital expenditure for like yeah. furnace replacement, more, roof replacement, whatever. Right. And, and this is a great topic. Yeah. Let's just dive into this for yeah. five minutes because, you know, on MLS and, and other places, even off market, um, a lot of people just market their buildings with like 5% management or maintenance sorry yeah which sort um, of covers both like right. it's covering your capex and in your maintenance i think unless you're like a really rough building where you just have tenants destroying your walls yeah and, and that's why yeah. i like to that's why i like to break it down a little bit more because technically you should have like I and mean, this is what we were arguing about is like what is maintenance what does that five percent cover what does the maintenance line actually yeah. cover what does that mean in, in my mind it never covers grass cutting snow plow or uh cleaning those are their own thing like to me, maintenance is is like anytime you call a plumber, you have a leak. Anytime you need to patch a hole in a wall or a door uh, knob needs to be replaced or you have to have keys, you know, a locksmith in to drill out a lock or whatever. Yep. Those things go in maintenance. And then I also would, you know, build a number into my maintenance for things like the new furnace down the road. If I have to do that once every 10 years, then yep. I want it one tenth of that cost this year. Uh, but that would be, and other people would would show that as a capex line. I like that better. I mean, just yeah. for simplicity. Well, the more, yeah, the more line items, the yeah. better, right? And that's why. When well, I, if you want to be super detailed, but if you're quick and dirty, like yeah, I mean, five percent, yeah, fifty door, whatever, yeah. right? As we're going through this due diligence process, buying these buildings with clients, um, that's where we do start breaking down. The yeah, lines, yeah. Right? If you're Say, once hey. you get past the initial, I want to look at this deal. That's when you really break down the numbers and see yeah. do a, do a complex projection, like the projection, you know that we did for our camp uh, or the, the recent acquisition of the resort or, or mm -hmm. you know, detailed budgeting, things like that. Um, but and this it, is the initial look. Yeah. And, and, and when you're buying these buildings, I'll just say this, when you're buying these buildings, you get the, you get a BCA, a building condition analysis, baseline condition analysis, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, that at the back of it or the front of it, whatever one you have, that has your breakdown of a 10 year lifespan. Of the yeah, building, like what you're going to need right? to do. And it'll actually yeah. pinpoint those numbers to say, hey, the furnace is going to go in between, you know, in year five, in and around that time. And yeah. that's where you can actually work that backwards and then go, okay, so is 2% uh, a year sufficient to get my 10 year life cycle items? Or do I need to make that 5% or 2%? And that's a line underneath yeah, and you can do repairs that, yeah. and maintenance. So you right. can see it right in those reports. Um, who do you typically get? Like what type of, like if somebody's listening to this or watching this and wants to find a, a contractor that can do that yeah. that report for them? There's a couple of different routes you can take. Um, I would say probably the, the most used is Pynchon. Pynchon, okay. Right? So they'll do environmentals. They'll do your, your building condition analysis. They do consulting, uh, things like that. They're the biggest company, the most recognized. Uh, but there's, there's smaller guys. Um, you know, my home inspector, who's also a commercial building inspector, Alan, uh, he'll take care of, Yeah, uh, he'll do a, so a home inspectors. On, yeah, that's what yeah. I was thinking. But yeah, there's going to be those other And companies. so sometimes yeah. I actually prefer to use the home inspector slash building inspector because they're going to go through and do the BCA for you, but they're also going to do the inspection, right? Like when you go through with pension, they're not checking every faucet. They're not flushing every toilet. Yeah. They're literally going into. So the home inspector is more thorough. Yeah. 10% yeah. of the units. Yeah. And saying on average. This yeah. is going to be the cost of your building over the next 10 years. Yeah. Whereas a home inspector will literally go through and be like, hey, unit unit 200 has a has a toilet leak and unit yeah. five. Uh, it's going to cost know, the sink though, is right? a little for bit the home inspector oh, to do almost all double that. the cost, right? Because yeah. now you're paying for a lot the of physical inspection yeah. plus the BCA. Yeah. Okay. So good to know. Um, been meaning to ask you that. So now we did. Um, okay. Utilities. It's funny because you just set all this up on our purchases. I don't even pay attention to it. Oh, Jake's got it covered. <laughs> well, I just got the system, right? <laughs> yeah. So we, we go and we just take care of it all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so utilities, we had uh, 1,800 was their common heat and electric, and there's no common water. Uh, they have separate water meters, we're told. So we've been told there's separate water meters. Each unit has its own furnace. So here we're into the list of things to like about this. Yep. So utilities are, are truly quite separated with the exception of your, you're going to pay for your hallway lighting. You're going to pay for your hallway common, heating. You're common. Yeah. Common utilities. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a number. Uh, so we estimated, oh yeah, water's water my apologies water was the one thing that was not separated I was say, yeah. water we came up with a 400 hundred dollar a month estimate for the six units and i do think that's very doable but as we said off camera all it takes is one bad apple yep. and you could see a big water bill i just i wouldn't estimate that you would but you might and it varies so much right like yeah in a building with a boiler you yeah. use water to heat the building sometimes yeah. those buildings use more yeah right? other buildings use less so mm -hmm. and, and on a building like this 
And this is something we never verified, Andrew. So I actually do have to check if the water is separate or yeah. not. But if it wasn't, this is something you could very easily do a wise meter to or, or something I, where I you would just do, I would water. just do the recoverable do the thing. Recovery. Like I would just set up a, a number, but it doesn't protect you completely. Yeah. It, you know, there, there obviously is. But I think that's one of the obvious rooms to kind of get your expenses down is to just build in a, you know, $100 a month or one, you know, whatever uh, recovery onto these units for water, which I think not many people would balk at a hundred dollars a month for water. Yeah. Um, okay. So management, I just built in 6% here because I think that you could probably get a few different managers that would want this. Mm -hmm. So you'd probably get a competitive pricing, but you're still going to pay for leasing. So 6%, yes. I would think you could find somebody that would do all that within that number. I know I could find 4% general management, no leasing, no repairs. Yeah. Okay. All right. So just day to day management. I actually had it quoted already. So I okay. know that I have somebody. So 4%, for that. and then so hopefully 4 the 2% will cover. Like if you're going to turn over every two to three years on average, I just like to build in a percentage that yeah. covers that. And it's almost yeah. like that repairs and maintenance line with Same thing. managers, right? What are we, is it a la yeah. carte? Yeah. Or is it going to be full service? Yeah. And you have to understand those differences when you're doing your underwriting. Same thing, right? Yeah. So when you're on MLS and people are using 2% management, they go, well, that's what we got it for. Yeah. That's fine. Well, you could self-manage on something like this. It's going to be pretty darn hands off. But even off. if you're self-managing, are you not paying yourself? Well, I agree with that 100%. <laughs> I always ask that, right? 100%, like... but I also build systems. Yeah. But yes, I agree with, you know, pay, paying yourself. Like I know a guy who every time he does a, a development, he builds in a salary of 125 grand a year should. per development. As you should. Paying himself regardless right. of, how, you know, these projects don't make money too, for years. Too, too many investors yeah. do do this for free. Yeah. Right? Their building's cash flow just enough. Yeah, and then they're working say, for free. And then... They don't account for that two percent life cycle item, and all of a sudden the yeah. furnace goes, and there's all your cash yeah. flow down the tube. Guilty, it's yeah. happened to me, right? Where it's right. like, oh, we got a new septic tank this year. Well, guess what? All that cash flow that I had, gone, or yeah. I thought I had, is yeah. now into a new septic tank yeah. because I didn't build in a two percent reserve. Yeah, right? oh, I hear so, you. I've been preaching this for for many years. So, yeah. so yeah. pay yourself. Yeah, you know, put a baseline property management fee in there, and yeah. you know what? That way, when you're driving down there on a Sunday to go check on what things are doing. I agree. Hey, at least you know you're not doing that for free. I agree. I think it. I think it's wise to build in a number to pay yourself. And, and so you're not kidding yourself about the fact that your your property is actually not making money. If you're not paying yourself, then even if it looks like you're cash flowing, you're not. Correct. Yeah. Uh, you just got to be real about it. If you're okay with that, that's fine. But best to be real about it. Yeah. Um, okay. So landscaping and snow, they actually... Uh, the people who had it listed had a higher estimate. We thought, you know, 2,500 based on what we saw in the pictures yeah. should be doable. There's not that much grass, not that not much, that much grass. Line. There's eight parking spaces. So, right. so yeah, get, I think you get little Jimmy from down the block, as I always yeah, say. Little Jimmy. <laughs> little Jimmy's busy, man. Uh, I know. Little Jimmy's yeah. running around for me everywhere, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And then I've got, I've got a cleaning area, uh, common area cleaning, because I figured we we're going to have to pay something somebody to clean even just once a month. You yeah. got handprints on the windows and stuff. People aren't going to love that. Or that could be uh, a yeah. site super. So then replace so, yeah. that fee with site super yeah, fee. Yeah, yeah. So, it's so super in interchangeable. I've right? got I've got 1200 a year built in for that. That might end up being light, yeah. but um, I'm just going to leave it alone. I, I think you could probably figure that out. Well, we, for, we can go back to the good old CMHC standards. Yeah. 500 a unit. 500 a unit. Salaries which is, and caretaking. Which is going to end up being three grand. Yeah. So if you go that, I mean, that's going to change the number. I'm going to leave that where it is for the moment. But um, so yeah, two two nine five. That's the part of this that hurts. I mean, there's a lot of good about this building. Uh, the price makes it challenging because that's showing as a three point two cap, yeah. uh, three point three almost. Uh, so financing wise, okay. I'm just going to tell you before I even dive into the financing numbers. The first thing that occurred to me is the price. When you asked, you're like, how much is this per unit? Yeah. Five hundred grand. Yeah. And uh, my reaction was like, holy crap. But then again, if this was a condo, you would expect those to be five hundred. In that more. area, for a condo, you're getting six fifty, yeah, seven hundred, so all day long. So my first question was, isn't this an obvious play to buy condo status and then just yeah. list for sale individually and yeah. sell? Yeah, like, and it's it, and that's something that I've been actually yeah. looking into and researching a little bit more recently because my clients are wondering what's the exit plan here, right? What's the exit strategy? And sure, maybe you stabilize it, maybe you buy it. But for a municipality who's open to condominiumizing some of their rental yeah. product, you know, based on cap or interest um, vacancy rates and things like that, um, yeah. it, it's a really good exit. Do you think that, like, I didn't know that municipalities would ever say no to they wanting would, to condo? Do. That's that's basically yeah. your only 
like when you're going for these things, yes, there's a yeah. cost to it. You yeah. need a lawyer to do the title docs. You need a lawyer to do all the condo docs. Um, but the big thing is the municipality actually saying no. So they so, do have a say in what you're doing. Interesting. Yeah. And I, I've never tried to condo anything, so I couldn't comment. But uh, I, I do know early on in my real estate investing career, I was just like basically looking up everything Eugene Drulo owned, like Drulo Holdings, and they were all condoed. Yeah. Like, even though he didn't sell anything. Yeah. Like, it was always held as rentals, but I guess he did it for the tax benefit. Like It's lower it, property tax. Now, that's changed yeah. since. So it's not like right. that anymore? No. So there's actually rental product. It, don't quote me on this, but based on the last few deals I did, which were buildings that were condos, yeah, the taxes being, ended up being, being higher. Rented as built, and, and or landlords deciding, are we going condo? Or are we staying rental product? Yeah, um, there was a discount for rental product tax rates mm -hmm. versus condo tax. Interesting. Rates. And, and you're talking property tax, right? Property tax. Yeah, yeah. And that was something based on trying to Im uh, improve more rental units in the market. Yeah. Okay. Right? And that and that's logical, uh, I think. So. I mean, that would be one of my first thoughts to do is do some due diligence, find out if it could be. Um, I don't think you're ever going to go in here with private funds and be able to carry it while you condo it no. and then sell it. You got to you got to do a reserve fund study. You got to set up the condominium corporation. Uh, there's a lot that has to be done. And if you're burning the whole time, that's not going to no. be good. I think this is more of like a two prong, like potentially yeah. buy it as an investor. You're going to burn a little bit because it's yeah. not going to cash flow. Well, so unless you can find a creative way. Yeah, and that's yeah. what I want to talk yeah. about because that's actually why I brought this to the table. Yeah. I, I don't have the exact answer for yeah. it, but I actually wanted to banter back and forth. Yeah, we, we like, were literally is... just planning to banter. Like, would we come up with an idea? And I just gave yeah. you my first idea. Yeah. So now what else we got? <laughs> yeah, so so to actually acquire this thing, I was thinking maybe there, maybe there's a potential partnership with the owners. Like, is there, like, like what do you get think fi of that? Seller financing or something? Seller financing or just like an earnout strategy. Be like, how, hey, how, like, like, like businesses, right? So businesses will have like an earn out, right? So I'm buying it from you and I'm going to earn the purchase price out. So almost like a vendor take back. Oh yeah. But okay. it's like interest free or low interest or this yeah. or that. So maybe something like that where, you know, I, I imagine that he's sticking to his two nine because the cost, cost of building that building. being in, and we right. don't know the fine, the financing I don't. on it, right? It could be leveraged to the, to the nines. I, I don't know. I, I do yeah. know it's not CMHC financing. Like and his I current do, financing. And I do yeah. think you go in there and try to get CMHC financing. Yeah. Right. So maybe that's what you do. You yeah. go in, you go, I'm going for CMHC financing. Yeah. Right. Give me the time to do that. And then give me a vendor take back for the remainder. Yeah. At a low interest rate. And then during that period, you go in, you you condo it. Yeah. Or you you do what you want to do. Well, I mean, I think so. Even if you go CMHC, you're going to be you're going to be limited because at, at 40 year am 4.5 percent interest. Well, this would probably this would probably hit for uh, MLI. Would it? Yeah, if that yeah, so you still might be around. able to go go fifty. Yeah. Okay, so if you could hypothetically go let's, fifty, hypothetically let's pretend it's MLI just to make. This yeah, happen. I mean, yeah. you're still gonna be like a fifty percent. Yeah, fifty five percent. You got to hit one point one, right? Yeah. Well, let's see. Sixty percent didn't work. So six, you're gonna be between like fifty seven and sixty percent. So let's say you let's say you, you you know you wheel and deal a little, you get yourself a, a slightly better price. Um, the guy holds a vendor take back perhaps it's yeah. in second position. You get an MLI select for 60%, 65% on the first. Yeah. And then he holds what, another 20? The, the problem, okay, so here's the other creative strategy is you can't, like CMHC is not going to let you put a second mortgage behind theirs. But not necessarily, if it debt services. In my experience, they don't. Maybe there's certain lenders that'll allow it if it debt services. I'm not. I'm not saying I have one today that would do yeah, that. Yeah, I've do heard know of a of, couple of commercial yeah. lenders, but would want it to debt service. The problem is we've maxed out the debt service right. already. So there's not like let's just assume that's off the table with an institutional lender. I've heard some that will allow seconds, but yep. it still has to debt service. Yep. So let's assume the only way you could do it is you literally have to go in and negotiate with the seller. And I know Carmen, your mom would do this all the time. Would say, okay, you can put a vendor take back, but you have to secure the mortgage on my other property. Right. You could do that. And, and I've heard of people doing and that. And that's very common. Yeah. I know a lot of people that do that, right? Hey, yeah. I'll throw it on this. this yeah. So I have another property. In the woods here, right? So you got to give me a VTV, <laughs> but you can't put it on the subject property. You got to put yeah. it on my other property. Yeah. And they'll do that. So that, I mean, you can negotiate anything into a deal. Yeah. You just got to get somebody willing to sign it. <laughs> but that's it. And, and, yeah. and by no means am I saying that the seller of this building is open yeah. to any of these things. Yeah. They may even, not I haven't be, even right? spoken with them about it. But yeah. I, I just, again, for the quality of yeah. building and the location it is, I thought it was worth yeah. to, for us to go back and forth and say, you know, what is the strategy so, to do this? 
uh, the and potential I strategy. Is, is, I think it is the, the CMHC with potentially a, a vendor take back. Um, increasing yeah. The well, the other the option is is going, you know, a type of thousand year amortization in here, and then uh, a one percent interest rate. If he was somehow willing to give one hundred percent VTB or able to, then you got some cash flow. Yeah. Then you're like fifty six hundred dollars a month cash flow. Yeah. Um, so there there are angles. I mean, the other angle would be maybe look at short term rentals, but I don't know the appetite in this market. No. Maybe you could do mid term, like for doctors and nurses, minimum uh, thirty days. Then you fall under landlord tenant rules. You don't have to worry about how every municipality is cracking down on Airbnbs. Uh, there might be potential to get those average rents, say, up to 3000 right? So if we take all of these to 3000 just go copy this down, then that's 18000 a month. And let's just see here. If we go back to the MLI select idea, do we get at 4.5? Yeah. It looks like it works. It works very well. If yeah. you can get it, if you, you could even go right up probably to 90%. Yeah. yeah. So if, if you went to with midterm, of course, there's going to be investment. There's no guarantees with that. They're yeah. going to pay more for management. Um, but there are about, ways to make it work. What about secondary income sources? TV antenna, billboard. Yeah, right? like uh, maybe you could look into spots, that, right? right? You could look into that. You have two extra parking spots. Maybe there's some parking income to yeah. be earned. I know it'd yeah. ruin, I'd ruin the, 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 the beautiful... The, the facade of the building, yeah. but I do know there was a deal I was right. working on. It never went through, but there was a deal I was working on in London. Yeah, and it was a plaza on a corner, busy, busy corner like this. Yeah, and the building itself would be. It was yeah. the cap rate was like four percent, something like that. Yeah, but they had a deal to install two uh, digital billboards. Yeah, and those two digital billboards alone brought that deal yeah. into like a five and a half cap. Yeah, and like killed it. It was. Yeah. The cash flow was great. It was a 10-year contract. And the company installs and pays for the install themselves. Yeah. I, I mean, right. like that's potentially possible as long as the municipality would, yeah. would sure. okay it. Right. Um, the other thing I think is more more likely, and I see this all the time, and I feel sorry for the people who live in it, is the cell phone antennas on the side yeah, of the building. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the brain cancer and the people who live in the top units is probably not great. But um, yeah, this one doesn't have a flat roof, no, so that so might not work. For those, but they might not work. Yeah, but just, you just other little things, right? There may be, and this is the creative thinking where, like, there's always a way to make a deal work in Ontario. Yeah. Uh, it's just a matter of it might not be as obvious as it is in some other markets. Yeah. Which I mean, I like going to obvious markets, but this is home for us and a lot of people, and a lot of people want to invest at home. And that's it, right? Yeah. We said it from the beginning. This isn't yeah. a slam dunk. This isn't a yeah. you know go grab it today. This is a a good thought experiment yeah. and a very nice building sure. that I'm, you know, I'm going to try to figure out how to, how to buy it. Yeah. All right, Jake, people want to know more about this one or hear about some of the off market deals yeah. that you got. Where do we send them? Yeah. Link below. So yeah. we're, um, go down there. You'll get a call from us. We'll reach out. We'll have a bit of a conversation. Um, we then try to get everybody into an in-person meeting if they want, right. We could sit down, have coffee, discuss a little bit more about the, uh, the real estate action plan. I've talked yeah, about that yeah. before. Um, and then we go from there, guys. It's a, it's a very simple process. There's no obligation. Um, but it's I love having conversations like this with yeah. other investors. And that's the whole point, right? You come in and I want to have this exact conversation mm -hmm. with with you, with an investor, with whoever yeah. comes in. Um, and we we just figure out the strategy that works, right? We're uh I like I like to think we do sales a little bit differently here. We're yeah. very analytical. Yeah. Right. And in rather than pressure sales or, you know, take it before it's gone, you know, we say slow down to speed up. Right. Let's let's yeah. let's look at everything first and then go from there. Make so sure you make sure you got a plan. And the nice thing with, with with, you know, the commercial approach and commercial like realtors that are like focused is like you're not in it for one. Yeah. Like you're going to work with these people yeah. like and that's that's a, a great thing about being in the investor space. It's funny if you ask yeah. any of my like good clients, all of them will say the same thing. All of them will yeah. come to you and say, Jacob told me to like not buy or yeah slow down or you know like don't yeah. worry about buying something today because it's the same thing everybody's always so excited they're like let's get into it let's get into it yeah and i'm yeah. like hey man like pump the brakes hang on you're not quite there yet like, yeah and maybe not even that maybe you're 100 percent ready but the deal's just not out there right now yeah right give me 30 days yeah right and i tell you right now you can go buy this today or you can give me 30 days and i'll try to find you something that's going to blow that out of the water sure right and usually that happens and, cool and then we repeat yeah exactly so sometimes you got to be a little bit patient that makes that's sense it. All right. 
Cool. Well, uh, hey, if you made it this far, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, notification bell. Just show some love to our channel. Help it get out there a little bit more. And we'll see you again next week. See you then.